Today, in five minutes, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about sanding. Last episode, we talked about different types of sanders. Today, we're going to talk about sanding techniques, and I'm going to reveal some secrets that you might not know about sanding. Hello everyone, Colin Cadet from Woodwork Web. The first thing you need to know about sanding, there's four important things to always remember. The first reason we sand is to erase machine marks off the wood. The second reason we sand is to smooth the wood over. The third reason we want to sand is because we might want to be leveling the wood, especially if you've got two boards glued together. And the third reason we want to sand is to give the wood a tooth for maybe a stain or a finish that we might be putting on the wood. Now everybody knows that there's all sorts of sanding grits. So where do you start and where do you stop? For natural wood, I start at 60 and then you progress through each one of the grits because each one of the grits is going to erase and smooth out the previous one but where do you stop for natural wood I always stop at 150 or at the maximum 180 and if you are sanding beyond 180 depending on what you're doing it's probably a waste of time and a waste of sandpaper because your best finish um, beyond 180 is probably not going to change very much um, and there will be some exceptions to that but uh, typically 150 or 180 is the highest you'll need to go now there is an exception and that's when you want to break an edge and we'll show that in a minute here to break an edge I go to the next highest grit and that's 220 so let's look at breaking an edge when we're sanding we typically have flat edges but the other thing that we have to sand when we're sanding is the very corner and when we sand or round over the corner we call it breaking an edge and the reason you want to do that is if you leave the edge sharp of course it's it's dangerous and, and sharp uh, but the other thing is when it's round, rounded over there's a place for material to grab onto if it's absolutely sharp like that there's no place for stains or dyes or, or a top coat material to grab onto. So we round it over just a little bit so that there's a place for material to grab onto. Now the best technique for sanding a board, this one you can tell there's two boards glued together and there's a tiny bit of a ridge here and if that's the case the first thing you want to do is sand against the grain and we only do that when we're leveling so I don't have the sander turned on but typically I would be sanding against the grain then when you have the the ridge taken away then we always sand with the grain and that's when we go through the progressive grits and we go up and down until it's nice and smooth uh, and we finally finish to a 150 or 180 grit Okay, let's talk for a minute about plywoods and veneers. Now we're talking about some very thin woods. What do I do with those? For plywoods, I start off with, and I only use 220. That's the only thing that I use for plywoods and veneers. And you have to be very careful. And that's why the four things that I talked about earlier are important. Because if you over sand a piece of wood that's only this thin to begin with, you're going to sand right through it. So you need to keep in mind that you're never going to be leveling plywood or a veneer. You're only going to, going to be giving it a very top coat um, sanding and a very light one at that. Now when I'm talking about tooth this is what I'm referring to. If this was a piece of glass and we looked at it on the edge grain this is what glass looks like. Very smooth there's no tooth to it. If we look at rough lumber this is what rough lumber looks like if we look at the edge of it. That's lots and lots of tooth. What we want is something in the middle, and this is what a 150 or a 180 will give you. 
just a little bit of tooth, enough for the material to grab onto. If it's too fine, stain will just wipe off. When you put stain on, it'll just wipe off. So you need a tooth for the material to grab onto. Now the last thing I want to show you is how to put a little chamfer on the bottoms of all your table legs, uh, chair legs, all that sort of thing. Now you can do this by hand or you can do it with an electric sander which I'm going to do and I'm just going to do it quickly and roughly so you get the idea. So there's the chamfered one and you can see what a lovely uh, detail it puts on the bottom of a leg compared to this one with nothing on it. And not only do we do it for the detail because it's a lovely detail, but also it, if when the leg is moved around, it stops the, from the wood particles from fraying out. So there's another little tip on finished sanding. Don't forget, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Stay tuned because we've got lots more great videos coming.